Hi, my name is John Gottman, and I want to tell you about a paper that is in press that I wrote um, called Gay, Lesbian, and Heterosexual Couples About to Begin Couples Therapy, an online relationship assessment of 40,681 couples. It's still the case that a thorough quantitative assessment of a relationship is not standard for couples therapists. So we wanted to remedy that situation. So over the last three decades, we created and validated a thorough set of questionnaires that a couple fills out. It takes about one and a half to two hours to fill them out. And the online questionnaires give the therapist feedback on specific strengths and challenges facing a couple, as well as the individuals. We evaluate the relationship strength and challenges in conflict, friendship, sexuality, and shared meaning. We also evaluate the presence of common comorbidities like affairs, domestic violence, addictions, mental illness, depression, anxiety, and specific problem areas that the relationship is facing. This report is based on a sample of 40,681 couples and another 25,000 couples who provided demographic data as well. And there was heterosexual couples, lesbian and gay couples, and questionnaires were validated for each kind of couple. We divided the sample randomly into two subsamples and did all of our analyses on both halves of the overall sample to see whether or not the findings replicated across random samples, to see whether um, the data were stable and trustworthy. Replication has become a major issue in psychological journals of late. And so we found that 91.3% of our results replicated across both samples. So the data are stable and trustworthy. And a, a sample size of this size has never been done of couples about to begin couples therapy. So it's kind of a first. Our findings are generally that same-sex couples are in much better shape when they begin couples therapy than heterosexual couples, uh, with the exception of gay male couples being more likely to have affairs than heterosexual couples, and heterosexual couples being more likely to present with affairs than lesbian couples. We also found that um, in terms of the trauma that the initial family created, that was greater in same-sex couples than heterosexual couples. Comparing husbands and wives, wives were significantly much more troubled than uh, husbands were on almost every dimension that we measured. Now, the major finding of this research study is that the couples who are seeing our therapists, everyday kinds of couples, are much more distressed than we would ever have thought. For example, about 60% of them are facing domestic violence. Very large percentages of, of, of these couples have significant problems, both in the area of conflict and friendship and intimacy. And what we also found was that in many university-based studies, comorbidities are generally screened out, and yet they're standard bill of fare for the couples that our therapists are facing every day. So the general finding is that compared to university-based studies evaluating the effectiveness of various kinds of couples therapy, our data suggests that couples are much, much more distressed. Usually in university-based studies, they may be about a half a standard deviation from the mean, very close to the mean. And the studies are effective in getting them a little bit beyond the mean. In our data, there are two and a half standard deviations on average, much further away from the mean. And the kind of effect sizes that we have currently in couples therapy really wouldn't help these couples very much. So therefore, this article is also a challenge to the field of couples therapy to create interventions that deal with these common problems of domestic violence, addiction, affairs, all kinds of trauma that our therapists are seeing every day in their offices, and yet our therapies really don't address. So that's the gist of my article. Thank you very much for listening.